Hello everyone and welcome back to Black Dahlia. Last time we got bombarded with a lot of information about pagan knights and knights of the order and we had a lot of time with the stained glass window puzzle. But we came up with a bunch of different names and I think it's about time that we actually go back to McGinty's bar and see how well George has been doing in his search to figure out more about this Louie. And now for the it might take a couple of times in order to get this option to show up. Hello, George. Were you able to find out anything else about Louis? Nah, I asked around, but it's, it's like I told you, nobody knows this guy. Oh, well. Thanks for your cooperation. If you happen to hear anything else, please give me a call at the COI office in the federal building. Uh, wait, 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 there, there is something else. It didn't mean nothing to me, but it, it might mean something to you. One of the boys says he overheard Louie talking to Mr. Finster. He says he kept calling himself Harold. I don't know if it means anything or not, but... I just went on the Holy Bible and he said his name was Louie. I don't know if it means anything or not, but it could be important. Thanks again, George. Just catch his creep and lock him up for good. The Axis boat falsely flaunted our very own hmm. stars. All right, and well, and had an American name. we certainly know that Louis certainly loves his aliases, so Harold might just be another one that he just came up with out of the blue. Or it could be another name of another person? Who knows? So it's about that time we might as well try and see if we can get in touch with Louis. So we are going to go about trying to get in touch with him based on the phone number that's right up above on the top right hand corner. More bad news for the Axis as the British began an offensive in North Africa along the 130 miles. So there's a couple of things that can happen with the um Phone, if you're getting the ability to type in something, so let's try this. Oh, uh, sorry to have bothered you. Hmm. okay, that didn't work. For some reason, even with um, putting in a phone number, you can get a bunch of different things happening, including uh, something like this. Thanks to the efforts of a local doctor, Jerry was revived. Yeah, definitely wrong number. Okay. But what we're really looking for is for a very specific prompt before we're able to input the name that we are looking for. And it, it takes a little bit in order to work it. crowd of 6,000 gathered for the Freedom Day rally at Public Hall. The cheering crowd of freedom conscious Clevelanders condemned Nazi hostage. The female name is, uh, voice is actually not something we're looking for, but just on a whim, we're going to try out not his actual names that we're seeing here, whether it be Fielding, Fielder, or whatever. Let's try the, the name that was on the bottom. Sorry to have bothered you. Hmm. Well, it is correct, but we're missing the proper prompt. And it's actually because I'm putting in the wrong number um, in the phone number. Apparently, if you're just given a six-digit um, phone number, you don't have to change and do addition and subtraction to the letters in order to get the right thing. All you really need to do is just translate the numbers, uh, the letters to the proper number without any addition or subtraction. You want the who do you want prompt, and then we can put in Lou Fisterwald. I don't believe it actually matters if you put it in lowercase or uppercase. I'll try there, thanks. Meanwhile, the city police have been baffled Looks by like the I finally found Louis. There we go. Okay. All we really get there is just the prompt that, oh, we can go to a place called the Raving Room. Raven Room. Sometimes I'll say raving, but this is the place that we have to go to. I believe if you do have the name Fisterwald already and did not do the puzzle before, you can just enter it in and you're all good to go in terms of getting to this part. So the previous puzzle, I think I mentioned before, is optional. We have nothing better to do, so we might as well head over to the Raven Room. Sir. 
certainly a much different place than what we've been noticing before. In the other places we visited, anyways. Not a whole lot we're able to actually look at as well. Um, there is this note here, pretty much in the register book, that pretty much just welcomes us and thinks about what we really uh, have here. Just pay attention to not all of the names and the fo uh, phone numbers that are in here, but just the name that was at the bottom of the welcome letter, Joseph Mulhaven. Mulhaven was one of the four names that we also saw in the stained glass puzzle. So, all these names coming up pretty fast, as well as we can actually make connections ourselves. Hello? I'm sorry, I was hoping you might be able to help me. I'm looking for a man named Louis Fisterwald. Is he here? Uh, what did you say his name was? I didn't. But I have a feeling if I'm going to get more information, I shouldn't actually tell him I'm a federal agent. Since he was with Finster and trying to get something out of him? Uh, I didn't. Uh, Hank Finster sent me. He had a message he wanted me to deliver to Louis. He's reconsidered Louis's offer. Mission? What's a convicted felon doing at a mission? Pearson's almost smooth, but, uh, didn't have to press the button every time he has to talk, man. <laughs> oh well. So, he mentions the mission, but we are not able to get there yet, so we need to do a little bit more digging in this very small foyer in order to see what we can find in order to get to that specific mission. Because I have a feeling there's more than one mission in Cleveland. Hmm. This is one little area that we're able to actually look at, and do you notice that little thing on the floor there? That's actually what we're looking for. Sometimes you do have to do pixel hunting in order to find when your cursor is actually able to go, Oh, you can examine this little area of a room. It's not all that bad, but sometimes it can get a little bit weird. Hmm. I'm sure if I did, like, enough digging, there's some significance to that picture, but it's really more about the information that's on the back of that card. The Holy Card, as what it's called. Also, Mulhaven, Joseph Mulhaven, on the blacklist. Probably some other people on that register might be on the blacklist if you're willing to go into enough detail in order to find, like, a little couple more of them. But not really necessary to know. Alright, holy card. Here we go. So, let's flip that over. What's this? Looks like someone's been spending some time at St. Bartholomew's mission. Hmm. Ernie and Louie. Keeping score on the back of a card, the Lord is my shepherd who will guide me through the Valley of Shadows. As well as an ad proper address to St. Bartholomew's mission. That's the key in order to get that location to pop up. We're doing pretty well on this Louie trail, so let's keep going. And cut. Good. Good scene. Alright, so... Uh, not really much that's really impressive in this area. Not much to look at either, or even examine, other than, well, our guy behind the desk here. Excuse me, my name's Jim Pearson. I'm from the COI. I was hoping you might be able to help me. Sure, mister. I'll help you if I can. I've just got a couple of questions for you. Oh, all right. I'll help you if I can. Huh. Well, uh, let's let's start small. Let's work our way up. A lot of people come through here, I bet. Oh yeah, especially now, what with everyone afraid of the torso killer, no one wants to sleep by himself anymore. Hasn't anyone been able to help? No. They just try to get rid of the poor hobos. Why, just last month, Mr. Ness burned down their camps. Said he was trying to smoke out the killer, but 
All he did was burn down their homes. Well, I think it's a mighty decent job you're doing here, friend. Thanks, mister. What do you do here, friend? I help the fathers with the place. Keeping things up, that sort of thing. Jack of all trades, huh? Yeah, I guess. Mostly, I help out with the hobos. Make sure there's no trouble. You, uh, you see a lot of trouble in here? No, not really. Mostly, I play cards. Hmm, good for you then. Well, you play cards, huh? You must play cards with the Louie. Do you know a fella named Louie? Sure, I know Louie. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Yeah, he works at the Raven Room. He's a doorman. Say, why are you looking for Louie? I've just got a few questions for him. Oh, oh, I thought maybe he'd gotten into trouble. He get into trouble a lot? Yeah, yeah, Louie's always getting into trouble. Oh, but I shouldn't be talking about that. Why shouldn't you say anything about that? I don't rat on friends. Hmm. All right, then. How long have you known Louie? Louie and me go way back. You don't say. Yeah, since we was kids. Louie's always looking out for me. He even got me this here job. This Louie sounds like a swell guy. Oh, he's the best. You want to see something? Sure, why not? Got me introduced to Gloria the Mill. Got my picture taken with her and everything. Say, that sure is a nice picture. Who are those other fellas? Are they friends of Louis. Hmm, friends, huh? So, in terms of that picture that he just showed us, that is actually a really interesting picture that we actually need to see a little bit more in detail. So we get this option here. The uh, father's around now? Nah, they left me to watch the place. What's the matter, mister? They were supposed to have a package for me. So you don't suppose you... No, I couldn't ask you to do that. Do what, mister? You don't suppose you could look for that package for me, do you? They were supposed to have it in their offices. Oh, sure, mister. I could do that for you. You'll watch the counter for me, won't you? No problem, friend. Say, mister. Yes? What's this package look like? Ah, uh, it's about uh, that big, say? About that. All right, I'll go fetch it for you. I don't know what it is about that scene, but it's just really good. I think it's just because of the guy who plays Ernie's um, delivery of his lines and just how he acts. And. Honestly, I wouldn't even know if that was Ernie. We just kind of have to assume that's Ernie. And yeah, Lou Fielding is on the roster here. He's his fielding in terms of his work here. And then we got Ernie Wiggins, who seems to be the only counter guy who works. So, being behind this desk, we have to find that photo. And I have no idea how in the hell the photo could be possibly be in like the spot that it is because of how quickly Ernie can get it in and out. But um it's actually not in the obvious place. It's actually inside of a suitcase. And this suitcase gives me more trouble than it honestly should. It's not even a puzzle really. It's just all about shifting and moving items around in the suitcase in order to get to that specific picture. But the problem is, it follows the same kind of, um, kind of principles that the stained glass puzzle followed, and that nothing can be overlapping each other. So if even the slightest corner of this, of these weird oblong pictures 
are overlapping each other, you can't move them. So it involves a lot of back and forth, making sure that everything is not touching each other, no touching of any kind, in order to get to the bottom of the right side of the case. It's more trouble than it's worth. I will m mention right now that I had I decided to do some digging on the namesake of um, Gloria DeMille. Because Black Dahlia does look try to look into um, figures and people of the early, um, early 20th century. And while I didn't find a Gloria DeMille specifically, I did find a... Um, actually, two people. One is Gloria Swanson, and the other one is Cecil DeMille, who I believe they just amalgamated the two names together in order to make Gloria DeMille. They were both people who were involved in the fi film industry in the 19 starting in the 1910s during the silent era of film. And I think, there we go, finally I can get over to the other side and see some stud magazines. Sweet! As well as a map of Cleveland, and finally that photo that he showed us. A bunch of other people on it. Gloria DeMille being the one in the bottom right. We'll need to find... I guess Ernie is up there on the second from the left. We'll need somebody to look at that picture more in detail to figure out who is who in that picture, though. But we're a little bit closer to figuring out who Ernie, uh, Louis actually looks like. While Ernie's taking a, his really sweet time trying to find a package, bless his soul, we can look at some extra things that we weren't able to look at before, which is interesting. In terms of this blackboard here, there's not a whole lot that's really interesting on here. It's just mostly missionary stuff and how that is all worked. Pretty strict. But what draws my eye is what's in the bottom right-hand corner, which is the BVM, which looks completely out of place compared to the rest of the stuff in the blackboard. And I just decide to write it down and see what happens later on. Maybe I need that information, maybe I don't. Who knows, though? Uh, Ernie, I don't think you're coming back. So, with that, we are hot on the trail of Louie in order to figure out who he is and where he actually is. He is in the raving room, but uh, let's see about getting some more dirt on him. So next time, we're actually going to have a talk with Detective Marillo and see if we can get more information about Mr. Louis Fischerwald.